When trying to achieve four color process separations or prints in Corel Draw or Photo Paint, the most important thing to realize is the correct need for color space. Now, color space is how the program, whether it be Corel Draw, Photo Paint, or even Photoshop, interprets the colors in an image. Typically, your Corel Draw or your Photo Paint will be set up to a default color mode. Unfortunately, this does not work well whatsoever for four color process separations. When printing four color process separations, it's very, very important to actually print those with limited ink colors. Let me explain. Let's open this four color process image. This is open in Photo Paint. Now, when you're actually making adjustments to the four color process image, we recommend doing those in Photo Paint, not Corel Draw, because you have more control over a photography type of work. Also, let me premise that any four color process design is obviously a gradient scale design. So you do need a RIP software like AccuRIP in combination with an Epson printer in order to print correct half tones and screen print this design in four colors. Most images are going to be opened up and always should be edited in RGB mode. RGB mode is your default color mode for most JPEGs and images that you'll download, whether it be a, a photograph taken with a digital camera or something you got off the internet. This is an RGB image opened up with the default color profiles in CorelDRAW. CorelDRAW and PhotoPaint use color profiles under the Tools menus. If you go to Tools and you go to Color Management, you can see what profiles you're going to be using. Right now, everything's set up to the default profiles. Now, the way CorelDRAW and PhotoPaint work is they actually take the default color profile of an image. So if an image is saved with a color profile, it will open with that color profile. Now if an image is not saved with a color profile, it will automatically assign the default settings. For instance, this image right here does not have a color profile, so it's def using the default color profile settings as you see there. If it did have a profile embedded with it, it would use the document profile. So you have two profiles right here, both your document settings and your default settings. Once again, if there's no settings on your documents, which most RGB images you encounter will not have settings embedded in them, it will default to the default settings in CorelDRAW. A couple other windows you also want to have open in PhotoPaint. So we're going to go to our windows and we're going to go to our dockers. You want to have your channels opened. You also want to have your image info open as well. This is an RGB image. If we choose our channels over here on the right hand side, you can see the blue green and red in the image creating the full colors of the RGB. Now we want to change this to CMYK so we can do four color process separations. Converting it in photo paint is actually very simple. Simply go down to your image and then convert to CMYK color and that converts it into four color process. So we have our black, yellow, magenta, and cyan channels. Four color process is printed from light to got dark so yellow, magenta, cyan and black, so we start with yellow, then put magenta on top of that, cyan, and then black, and that's how our four color process image would actually be screen printed. When you're screen printing four color process inks, it's very important to limit the color values. If your image is too saturated, and you put too much ink down on top of too much other ink, it's gonna turn to mud. Right now, as you see these channels, you can take a look at the saturation levels. Now obviously right here, you're seeing yellow, but down here, you're seeing a lot of yellow. And if we look at our image info right over here, you're seeing 100% yellow. So actually right here is printing a spot color of the design. We take a look back into our channels and take a look at another channel, for instance, the magenta. Magenta, you see right here under the image info is printing a much more limited color. But up here in the mountains, it's printing almost 100% in the magenta of the mountains. Also with the cyan, if we take a look at the cyan image info printing very heavy amounts of cyan both up in the mountains right here in the sky and then finally the black we look at the black grayscale you see mostly almost a spot color 100 percent black in these areas of the dark shadows of the trees now even though this looks correct on the screen if we try to screen print this it would be extremely saturated and that's just the way most programs are defaulted to read the color values it looks great on your monitor but for screen printing inks not going to work at all. For years, CorelDRAW has not been used for four color process separations because the inability to actually go in and customize your color settings. For instance, most ink manufacturers have settings that you can load into Photoshop and customize the color values for CMYK inks. This is International Coatings CMYK 
ProBright series of inks color settings. And in Photoshop, I could go in here and I can plug in all these values and I can actually save it and Photoshop will color separate in CMYK correctly the way the inks needed to be printed through 305 mesh screens. CorelDRAW doesn't let me do that. I can't go into my color settings under tools and plug in those custom values. Like I was saying before, CorelDRAW does use embedded profiles and will open an image up with an embedded profile. So we're going to open up the same image and show you what it should look like because this image was actually color separated in Photoshop using the color values recommended by the ink manufacturer International Coatings. Keep in mind we're looking at the same exact image. So here's the default settings in CorelDRAW and here's the CMYK separation. Now let's take a look at the channels yellow, magenta, cyan, and particularly the black channel because you can see that the best. Look how much more limited and defined the black channel is with the embedded color profile correctly by the ink manufacturer and the default in CorelDRAW. You can see the difference both here. If we go look at our ink values, if I go to image and image info, take a look at the mountains right here. We are at 15% half tones or 15% black in the mountains. If I take a look at these mountains, we're at 42 45% black. So it's almost three times as saturated as the correct color profiles. But we're in CorelDRAW, we're not in Photoshop. And why would we have to use Photoshop in order to do a four color separation in CorelDRAW? This image right here was color separated in Photoshop and now we're bringing it into CorelDRAW. There's no need for that as long as you're working with the correct color settings. So what Ryan has actually done is we've created color profiles in Photoshop that you can actually load into CorelDRAW that will correctly read and color separate your images. So let's go ahead and close down this file and keep this file open for future reference. Now we'll go to our color management and we'll go to our default color settings. This is how you're going to prepare your color for profile documents whether you're in CorelDRAW or Corel Paint in order to correctly separate four color process images. First, we'll load our CMYK color profile setting. In order to get this file, you're gonna to go to our website, silkscreeningsupplies.com, and you're gonna to go to the inks page, and under four color process inks page, there'll be a file you can download color profiles for. These color profiles will be labeled for Photoshop or CorelDRAW. You're gonna to wanna to download the CorelDRAW color profile and save it to a place where you can browse to it on your My Documents folder. Once you're in the color management settings, you'll choose the CMYK setting and you'll go to other profiles and load profile. You'll browse to the Rionet IC ProBright ICC Ink profile and you'll double click it and select it. That will load a custom CMYK profile that we've made specifically for the Rionet IC ProBright four color process series of inks. This profile will also work with the standard four color process inks, but it does work best with the IC ProBright series. Let me also say that typically you're gonna be printing these through 305 mesh screens, though you can experiment with 280 mesh. So we've loaded in our CMYK color profile. Now let's load RGB. Keep in mind, when you open up an image, it opens up in RGB 90% of the time. So your RGB color profile is just as important, if not more important, than your CMYK color profile. If you open it up in the wrong RGB color profile, it's not going to convert correctly when you convert it, even if you have the right CMYK color profile loaded. So the best color profile to use is Apple RGB. So we're going to scroll down to other profiles, and you're going to select Apple RGB. This is the profile that we also use in Photoshop. For grayscale, you can select 20% dot saturation, which typically you're not going to be using grayscale images with this, but just select that for future reference. You can leave your color engine the same. Keep map gray to CMYK black selected. Do not select preserve pure black. Leave that unselected. You can leave that set to lab values. It doesn't affect your four color process separations. Under your color management properties, we're gonna choose convert to default color profile. Remember, this is our default color profile right here. We'll, we'll choose convert to default color profile and then import and paste convert to default color profile. We're gonna select these worn on pro color profile mismatch on all of the above. And this way, if we're op opening or importing a color profile that mismatches and we actually wanted to keep it, we have the option to choose on demand which color profile we wanna assign the image. Once again, under your default color settings, Apple RGB, load your Rionet IC ProBright 
CMYK color profile, 20% black, convert to default settings, worn on mismatches, convert to default settings, and warned him on mismatches. Once this, once your screen looks like this, you can go ahead and save this. Save it to four color process. Name it whatever you want, but I'm gonna name line four color process. And we'll hit okay. Now from now on, we can actually go into our color settings and we can load this right away. It saves it all for us right there. So now let's go ahead and open up the same file. Upon opening, you notice that we have the warning pop-up. So on this particular RGB image, there was no color profile. We want to assign the default color profile, which is Apple RGB. And what do you want to do? You want to select the default color profile and just hit OK. So now let's take this back to 50% so we can see the entire image. Now from here, we'll go ahead and convert to CMYK. Once again, go to image and then convert to CMYK 32-bit. And now we have our CMYK print. Let's take a look at this image compared to the one that was correctly set up in Photoshop. Let's take a look at the color values. The easiest spot, easiest place to spot that is right here in the middle of the mountain. In the Photoshop version, we have about 15% saturation. In the Corel version, we have 15% saturation. So we have a correctly separated file right here, ready to print. The yellow rings true as well. Right here in the middle of the mountain, we have a 35-36% saturation level. Right here, we have the same 35-36%. So as long as those color profiles are loaded, you can use four color process separations in Corel Photo Paint. Now let's say we wanted to make some more adjustments. If you want to make additional adjustments or enhancements to the image, you can go to Adjust, and then choose tone curve, and then choose the channel you want to adjust. So let's say we wanted to adjust the yellow channel. So we're gonna only adjust the yellow channel, but we can see how it affects the entire image. So we can do a tonal curve here. As you can see, that's taking yellow out of the image. Putting yellow back in the image definitely brings out more of the greens. So a lot of times people will come in, they'll do an S curve, and they'll change the specific channel of the image. Once again, to make additional adjustments, you go to Image, Tone Curve, select the channel you want to work with, and then you have the option to do a tonal curve on that, to add in or take back ink, to add in or take back ink. Typically, you're not going to need to do that as long as the correct color profiles are loaded in your document settings. If you're changing the way an image looks, we would recommend that you make all modifications to the image before you convert it into CMYK profile. So right now we're going to open this image up in RGB profiles and what I mean is modifications is if you're changing the curves in it, you want to make it look differently, do it in RGB mode and then convert to CMYK. So make all your adjustments and modifications in RGB and then your last step of the process would be to convert to CMYK. Corel Photo Paint does allow you more control over the image versus Corel Draw. Corel Draw is vector, so even though we can use CMYK separations in Corel Draw with the correct color settings, you can't go in and see the specific channels like you can here in Photo Paint. Also, if you wanted to make tonal curves to a specific channel like we were showing you before, you cannot do that in Corel Draw. You would need Photo Paint for that. If you're using Corel Draw, it works the same way. A lot of times, people have primary color mode in Corel Draw set to CMYK. Now if we create a new document, you notice that it's Apple RGB color mode for RGB, CMYK profiles, right on that pro right. Then we can paste this. Now if we want to come along and add a black vector text or something like that, we can do that right here in Corel Draw. So if you're adding text, we would recommend using Corel Draw, not Photo Paint, because Photo Paint is a raster program, Corel Draw a vector program. If we want to use our CMYK color palette, we'll go to Windows make sure that our default color palette is selected and our CMYK color palette. If you want to add more colors, not in the CMYK realm, you would want to use your Pantone solid coated color palette. But for instance, if we wanted to just add a black text right here, we could do so. Type in Rionet, size it, color that as our 100% black CMYK color value. Select our correct media size and rip printer. We go to print separations. We can view these separations and go to preview. We can see the cyan, magenta, yellow, and then black separation. And once again, 
this is the limited correctly printed black and you can see the text in black that we added on here. You can learn more about the image prep and printing side of four color process separations including mesh selection, ink choices, and printing techniques on Roundit's new four color process DVD.